Hello, so we meet again. I feel like that was almost creepy. Good morning, good life. Welcome back to Amy TV, where we come together to help you go after the life you want. This is me strategically fitting in like one of my sit down videos, but with the vlogging camera. So it's a little bit different, but it's kind of the same, but it's pretty different, but it's also the same, but it's like vlogmas. So let's do this thing. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about before we go into a brand new year, a brand new decade is healthy habits and some that you might pick up before or as you start the new year. Here's the thing. We always get very excited about new year, new me, new year's resolutions. That's all fine and good, but we want habits that will stay. And so I'm just running by you a few good options for you to think about so that you can start to understand why they might be valuable to you and then actually implement the changes that would need to happen in order to make them a true habit. This is going to be rapid fire style. So hang on to your butts. Before we start, I have to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this episode of Vlogmas on Amy TV, and that is our friends at Talkspace. This is one of my newer healthy habits that I have been really enjoying lately. I'm definitely thinking about stepping it up a notch and taking it even more seriously as I go into 2020, but I will tell you more details about that in a little bit. All right, let's get into it. Here are 20 healthy habits to start in 2020. Number one, walk more. If you're like me, you're sitting down a ton in your life, so any extra movement is huge and walking actually helps you so much to better your health. Number two, and I think I'm going to get some pushback on this, start drinking black coffee. Something I did three, four years ago was to start drinking black coffee, just not putting anything in it because it was extra sugar, extra cream, extra milk, extra stuff that it didn't need. I feel like it's kind of like Lauren Everett's Bostic, balance your life like you balance your checkbook. You're gonna want a little bit more calories for better things than for your coffee. Number three, let your phone sleep in for an extra hour per day. Instead of saying, oh, I'm not allowed to touch my phone, you're saying, oh, I'm letting it sleep in so it can really hang with me for all the things I'm gonna put it through the rest of the day. That's a much better take on it. And then you aren't staring at your phone from the first moment you wake up. Number four, write everything down. Whether you have a bullet journal, whether you have the Good Morning Good Life Planner, whether you use an app, it doesn't matter. Stop trying to remember everything. The moment you think of it, write it down so it's out in the world and you can actually start planning to do it later. This has been a game changer for making me feel clarity in my mindset and I know I wrote it down and I won't forget it because I got it out of my head, which is not a very good filing cabinet. Number five, send thank you notes for the small stuff. We always remember to send thank you notes for like wedding gifts or baby shower gifts gifts or gifts galore, right? But I like to send thank you notes for people who spend time with me or somebody who features me somewhere. Or maybe if they got me a gift that wasn't tremendous or huge or anything, but it gave me an opportunity to show them in a reflection, handwritten note that I appreciate them for thinking of me. Bonus points if you can get it done in the first week and custom stationery makes it a lot more fun. Number six, and this is a tough one to actually stick to, but I highly recommend it because I try to as much as possible. I'm not perfect, but I try Come up with your go-to response for your typical triggers. There are things that happen throughout the day that trip us up, that make us feel the feels, and it's quite annoying, right? It's not very productive, and ideally, the way that we react to things would be somewhat different sometimes so that we aren't going to drive ourselves crazy or be less productive. For me, I struggle with unwelcome opinions. So when I'm not in the space to welcome feedback, my response that I have been rehearsing is, that's given me a lot to think about. Thank you. <laughs> I say it sometimes. I rehearse it in my head for too long sometimes that it never comes out because it doesn't feel right. But I know that the best thing that I can do is thank someone for thinking of me in the way that they do, that they're providing that constructive criticism, and I should take it into consideration when I am more readily ready. <laughs> for it. <laughs> Number seven, create your morning routine. If you don't know how to do that, except for to copy everyone else's in the world and thinking that's going to be the best thing you can do, it's not. You need to find one that works for you. Highly recommend my book, Shameless Plug can walk you through all the steps. You need to start your day on your terms. The only way to do that is to make time for you and what matters to you. You enjoy yourself. Okay, spend some time with you. Number eight, get at least six and a half hours of sleep at night. I hesitate to say that number, but I kind of know that that's like the safe number, but really should be seven to eight. It's only six and a half for me if I know I'm like cutting it really close with my calendar. But I try to strive for seven every 
night. So find what your sweet spot is and make sure that you make the intention of getting that as many nights per week as possible. It's the only way to feel like your best self throughout the day to have that energy level that you need from rehabilitating your body. Number nine, read every day, even if it's just a page. It doesn't matter what it is when you allow other people to teach you something that they spent their life's work figuring out that is bettering yourself. Number 10, contribute to a cause that you care deeply about. We really can't do anything for ourselves if we can't do something for the world. So whether it's time or money, what can you do on a regular basis to get a little bit more perspective on what's happening with the rest of the world? Number 11, reach out to at least five people per week just because. The more you stay in touch with the people in your life, the more likely they're going to remember you at times that it's really important. But if you don't just make relationships for the sake of caring about people, they're not going to be there for you when you care about some other thing that you need help with. Number 12, try a new workout on a regular basis, monthly if you can. What I like to do is try to change up the things that I'm doing for exercise because I get bored of them so easily. I get into a rotation of doing a workout really easily. The habit builds very easily, but then I'll be like, I'm bored of that need a new thing. It's not that I'm quitting, it's just that I need something else to challenge me, my mindset, and my muscles. Me, my mindset, and my muscles. That's like the name of my future book I will never write. Number 13, track your connections. So I talked about connections a little bit, reaching out to people, but it's very important to actually know who is in your network and make sure that you're keeping those relationships fresh. The tool that I've been using lately is Contactually. If you are someone who sees yourself growing your career, growing your business down the line, and you know that knowing people is important, this is a very good app for you to check out. Number 14, find your self-love habit and schedule it. I think there's a number of things that I particularly do for self-love. It's just taking care of myself, whether it's getting a facial, going to see my dermatologist, getting my nails done, going getting my brows done, my hair done. Like these are all for me, they really are self-love. Making time for a massage is like, oh, that's holy grail. When you know there's something that works well for you that you are actively showing yourself love, if you don't schedule it, it doesn't happen. So put it on the calendar. Number 15, find a way to save money automatically and invest it. I particularly like the app Acorns for this because I can schedule deposits to go into the account and I can also round up different purchases that I make and all of that money goes into an account and gets invested. It doesn't even cross my mind that it's gone and I am growing that little nest egg for myself. Number 16, define some something you always do. I think it's amazing when you can say like, oh, I always do that, or I do that every morning. For me, it's I drink lemon water every day, and I do my morning pages every morning. Like those things that we always do, I think they give us more confidence to have more habits, more positive habits that we always do, and I think that can be extremely empowering both for you and the people that you talk to. It'll make you stick with it even more. Number 17, come up with something that you never do. I never drink soda, or I've never touched a cigarette or I will never spend time with people who are negative influences around me. When you say statements like that, you're much more likely to follow through with them, especially if you're trying to quit something. Number 18, unfollow when you are unhappy. If someone you follow is not making you feel better about yourself, they're making you feel less than, unfollow them. You can come back to them later when you're in another place. You should not feel bad about that. You are not a bad friend. You are not a bad follower. You are doing you. Number 19, get your checkup. Go to the doctor, okay? Lady doc, derm, the dentist, the eye doctor. These are all people I see very regularly. <laughs> and number 20, hire somebody whose job it is to listen to you. There's actually lots of ways to do this, but one way that I highly recommend that has become more prevalent in my life has been therapy. It's just nice to know that somebody is there to listen. The hard part for me is that I always seem to have more and more appointments on my calendar and so I don't need to have an extra thing that I need to go do. I want to make it a habit to be able to share my feelings and have a safe space and that is what I love Talkspace for and I really appreciate them for sponsoring this episode of Amy TV. Talkspace is the most convenient and affordable way to improve your mental health. You can get matched with a licensed therapist from the comfort of your own device, your computer, your phone, and you can message them whenever and wherever it is. Is best for you. This has been so great for me because when I'm feeling the feels, I just go into my Talkspace account and kind of let my therapist know like, can you tell me if this is normal? <laughs> and you just get to have that space on demand instead of having to get in the car, go to an appointment and have like a scheduled time to cry. Like when is that convenient for anybody? It's not. It's absolutely worth a shot. And the best thing you could do is get yourself this gift for the holidays is the gift of having a safe space. The gift 
of therapy. While you're getting everybody else these really nice things, these thoughtful things, these things that you have put time and effort into, put time and effort into yourself, but don't make it harder than it actually seems. Check out Talkspace. It is probably one of my favorite things that's currently on my phone at this point. I will leave a link to it in the description below so that you can check it out as well. Those are 20 healthy habits that I think would be interesting for you to try in 2020. I'd love to hear which one you like the most. Leave that in a comment below. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. Make sure you subscribe for good vibes, and kiss the ones you love, and go after the life that you want. Cheers. Hey, are you struggling to find time for the things you love? Feel like you're constantly on the go, but taking care of everyone else first? You are not alone, and you deserve so much more. Not only are you capable of taking on this challenge, you already have all the tools it takes to make it happen. That resourcefulness is all you need to get activated by your new daily mantra. Good morning, good life. It's my new book, and it launches on Amazon on December 10th. More details at goodmorninggoodlife.com. Becca, please hold for Becca. <laughs> I need to send you something right now because Vlogmas is taking up all of our lives. Yeah, I need to do one thing at a time, unfortunately. Oh my gosh, the file's ending. Ah!